Hi, I'm Jill, co-author of Dining on a Dime Cookbook, and I get asked all the time how to hand wash dishes. So today I'm going to take a little bit of time and show you how to do this. First of all, it's really important that you rinse the dishes immediately after you use them. I know you're sitting relaxing in the room and you're tired and want to go to bed, but don't leave them until tomorrow to do them. The stuff gets stuck on there. Um, you have to run 10 times more water to try to scrub and scrub and get the gook off of it before you even start rinsing them. And then um, it takes more time. Besides wasting water, it takes more time to scrub and scrub. It just takes a couple of seconds to take that dish, that cocoa mug, and just rinse it out quickly and set it in the sink. And then later on you can wash them, but at least rinse them. Another thing I do when I rinse them is I usually try to take a mug or a cup and I fill it with water and then I put all the dirty silverware right into the mug and the cup. And that way I don't have to mess with rinse and those. They just sit there and soak until I'm ready. When I am doing, uh, like I have dinner and I put the dinner on the table, I take my pans and I immediately rinse them. Or if they're stuck with gooky stuff, I will put uh, hot soapy water in them and let them soak while I'm eating dinner. And then when I get up, all I have to do is just wash them out. We get so many questions. How do you scrub a pan? How do you, do you use vinegar and soda and all these crazy combinations of things, but just typical dinner cooking pans and dishes. If you soak them like the pans a little bit while you're eating dinner, it'll take you two minutes or less to scrub those pans and wash them. So I will start out with, I use this here little bucket. You can get wash pans at the Dollar Tree. Those are a little bit bigger. I don't, for me personally, I don't need a big pan like that. These I got at the hospital. <laughs> Whenever we were at the hospital, I just brought this one home. But you can get a bigger one if you have a large family. You can get a bigger one. That way I can have a large sink like this and yet I have a double sink at the same time. Now, often I get uh, told that it's less expensive to wash in the dishwasher than to do it by hand. The way I'm going to show you today, it's going to save you tons of water and it's going to be way cheaper than doing them in the dishwasher. So what I do is I put a few pumps of soap and I put about this much water in there. I put my soap into a pump bottle. If you have kids or a husband doing the, the dishes, sometimes they'll take the big old squeeze bottle and they'll just hold it up and they'll just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. So you're going through a lot more dish detergent. So don't put it in a pump. You save on dish detergent by doing that. Also, sometimes if you get too much soap in there, you're rinsing and rinsing and rinsing trying to get the soap off. So that's another reason why not to use as much soap. I And be careful when you go to buy your detergent. I went to buy this at Walmart and I found it by buying it in the little bottle, it was much less expensive than buying the larger, big clunky jug of it. And it's handier for me to store underneath my kitchen sink. So check your soap out and make sure that uh, you not get paying too much for it. Now, like I said, I put about this much water in. And my let's pretend like my silverware has been soaking in my cup. I will just take quickly and rinse. That's usually all it takes if they've been soaking in there. And I'll let my silverware in first. Usually there's an order to doing dishes. You do the silverware first, then you do the cups and mugs, then you do the plates and bowls, serving dishes, and then the pans. The reason for this is the water will start getting a little bit dirtier. If it gets too dirty, of course, change it. But it'll start getting dirtier, and the silverware is the first that you that you use it on your mouth. So you want the clean it to be washed in the cleanest water. And the same way with the mugs and cups. By the time you get down to the pans, those you use on the stove, and if there happens to be anything left on them, which usually there isn't, they get sterilized from the cooking. So that's why you do the dishes in this order. Now, I love using this rag. You can't find them any, find, they used to have very open weaved dish rags and you can't find them anymore. I hate to use like thicker wash rag type um, dish rags 
and uh, just a really thick rag I do not like to use and I don't like to use it for the purpose of if you're trying to get those rags into there they're so big and thick or sponge you're trying to get that stuffed in there and you can't feel to get down in the bottom of your mug this is so pliable that it just I can feel the edge all the way in there and I love using this size another reason I love these is in Kansas it gets so humid it takes forever to um, dry so what I with these holy ones that I make myself they dry very quickly and they don't mildew and I really like that over a sponge in a thick dish rag I knit these and all I use is a very, very thin string. This is warped from a loom that you um, that you put on a loom to weave with, but you can use just really thin cotton string. So I'm going to just show you how to first of all wash. Let me do the silverware first. When you wash your silverware, do the gooky part and don't forget to do the handles. They get dirty. Now, this is where I do different. Most people leave the water running like that. I don't. I put it over my bucket, and I rinse and turn it off. I do the sharp knife separate, separately just for safety. Now, what I'll do is I'll do the knives and the forks. If there's a fork that you have egg on it, usually if it's soaked, it's not bad. By using this dish rag, I just poke it through the holes and it will clean very easily. Then here's a spoon. And I won't do all of these because you get the idea, I think, of how to do these, the silver. And then I have a whole handful and then I rinse it, turn it off. Do my mug, always do the outside. Do the inside. Rinse, turn it off. Now, Here's a glass. You've got to be a little bit careful with glasses. I don't like forcing my hand in here to wash these. This is where the soft dish rag comes in again, too, or thinner. So you can buy bottle brushes if you want, but you don't need to do that. I just take, if I think there's something sticky in there, I will just take a long knife, sometimes wrap the dish rag around the knife, and you can get all the corners if it's sticky. Make sure you wash the rim of the glass, the outside of the glass, rinse. Why I rinse like this is most people have a double sink and they fill this up with a lot of water. They put the first two items in to that rinse water and by the second, third item, there's soap floating in it. So you add a fourth, fifth item in there, and now you've got water that's almost as soapy, especially because usually most people use too much soap. You've got water in there that's almost as soapy as your dishwash water. Then they have to let that out and add more clear water to it. And if you've ever been to somebody's home and had a drink of water or something and taste, it tastes kind of soapy-like when you drink it, usually that's because they've dipped those dishes in the, uh, in the French water like that. By doing this, uh, you don't have the, the soapy water, you get it all off. If you rinse like this, like I said before, you get a whole lot of waste of water. Now next I'll do bowls, wash the inside of bowls. If this is has maybe something caught, this has ridges on it, so if it has something caught, I will just take my little scrub brush and scrub around it. Rinse and off. Plates. Wash this side really good. Don't forget to wash the back. Also, when you're clearing the table, don't stack a whole bunch of gooky dishes together because then the back gets really gooky. Try to stack them a little more carefully. Now, I'm getting down to a pan. This is a stainless steel pan. And... I have one of these things that's called a chore boy. And Michael will put a link up for you um, on the for you to find out where to get these. This I use in place of you know the little I don't know what they're called. They're like a nylon or a little uh, scratchy sponge round ball thing that 
every, almost everybody uses to do their dishes, or even the green pads. A lot of people use the green pads that have green on one side and orange or yellow sponge on the other side. They they use those a lot, and I do not like those because this here, once again, it's like a dish rag. And see how it, it just bends and molds. Let's say I have this mug here that has something gooky in it. This I can take my finger and bend into the corner really good with this thing and get it down in there. If I have a sponge that I try to push in there, it doesn't work as well to get into those corners. I just love these things and I can never use those other things as well. They don't get the spots that I want. This thing is great for pants. As a matter of fact, probably Oh, 90% of the time I use this on my pans. You can use it on just about any pan you want. Now, if you want to scrub where you have um, more gookie that's stuck really bad on here, I will take this. Now, I know you say you can't use them on stainless steel pans. You can't use them on, um, uh, what are they called? Non-stick non pans and that type of thing. I use them on every one of my pans. Part of the secret is people, it's an S, this is an SOS pad. I'm sorry, this is an SOS pad. Here's the box for it. And you can get them at Walmart, almost any grocery store. It has soap in it. I don't wet mine. A lot of people wet theirs when they use them. Don't wet them. There's usually enough water on the pan. If you wet them, they rust faster and they use up faster. This way, by just using the wet that's on here and Usually it's either easier if you put a rag down on the counter and scrub. The part of the secret to this is I don't scrub to death. And you can't really tell it on the camera, but I'm lightly uh, scrubbing this thing to get, you know, this doesn't have a whole lot of gook on it, but I'm just lightly scrubbing it. That prevents it from scratching. I also love using this on my stove. And I'm going to pop over to the stove real quick and show you if, before you wash the dishes, take your rag and soak down the soap, wet down the soap with a wet sloppy rag. And just, if you've got sticky stuff, and let that soak while you're washing the rest of the dishes. I have, people ask all the time, how do I clean my glass top, top soap? If you can see over here, I have used my SOS pad on that. I very rarely, I don't use any of the vinegar and soda or any major type, I just take my, and I lightly, just lightly scrub it. And then, you can see it doesn't scratch it, it doesn't, well you can see the whole stove is never, it's not scratched, and I've used the SOS pad on that all the time. So then after this has been soaked for a while, I can wipe it down, and I would wipe it with a dish towel. I do that to the, um, sink or countertops. If there's sticky stuff before I start, I will take and put a pile of wet on that and let it soak while I'm washing the dishes so that by the time I'm done, that'll be all, the pancake batter will be all soaked and I'll just wipe it off. But anyway, I use that inside the SOS pad inside the pan and that's how I do my pants. Now you know what? I am an older lady now. Elderly as my children would say. And I will take, and I used to scrub and scrub my pants till every spot was off every time. I keep them in a cabinet. Um, I try to get most of the gook off of it and get them relatively clean. But if they're stained and they're getting, you know, dark spots, life's too short. Don't worry about it too much. Just get cleanly, semi-clean, and get that done. Now, I want you to look. I've only done maybe what I call half a batch of dishes. For a family of four, I do about twice, at least twice this amount. But if you look in my dish pan, I have been using this for rinse water and my dish water. Usually by the time I get done for a, a full-fledged meal where I use three pans and four plates and the silverware to go with that and glasses, this comes up to about here. This is a gallon, so I have barely used a gallon of water for rinsing and washing all of these dishes. And so that's why I say this is so much cheaper than doing it in a dishwasher or the way most people use it where they keep the water just running like that continuously or where they plug this up and fill the sink full of rinse water to do it that way.
So if you want a cheaper and uh, I think even faster way to do dishes, or at least equally as fast and uh, wasteless, you won't waste as much water, this is the way to do it. Oh, one last point before I forget. This isn't hand, this hasn't doesn't have to do with hand washing dishes necessarily, but drying them. Do not dry your dishes with a dish towel or anything. Let them drip dry. It has been proved scientifically proven over and over again that if you let the dishes air dry, you get less germs on them than if you take a dish towel that's wet and you're rubbing, you're just rubbing more stuff that who knows, you know, maybe somebody's washed, wiped their hands with that dish towel or something. It's just more sanitary to let them air dry and it saves you work. Why do all this energy? And then usually if you have a full meal, you've got two dish towels you have to use because they get wet. Then you've got to rewash them or hang them up to get them to dry. Just let them air dry. And in depending on where you live, in 15, 20 minutes, go in there and you can put the dishes away and you're done with all of your dishes. Thank you for joining us today and learning how to hand wash dishes. And please visit us at livingonadime.com.